All right, so I got it wiped down on Osfo and then painted, and yeah, it's terrible. There, I beat you to it. Um, this county line color, I thought I could go to Tractor Supply and match it. They didn't have a can that said county line. They had Cub Cadet and a bunch of others and John Deere and whatever, um, but there were like four different kinds of yellow there, and I thought I bought two that were close, and they weren't even anywhere close. So, and this is obviously faded, so it's not going to match, and I'm just going to have to live with it. I'm, I'm not... I'm not super concerned about how it looks, I just want it to function well. So let's try this out. Tight tip there, but the pins go in, yeah? Okay. Now, let's go to full. So the stop now is going to be the cylinder. The cylinder is going to stop this. Punk right there. That's four inches that direction. And the throw on this is pretty good. I mean, I don't, I don't see myself going anywhere past that. That's actually almost lined up there. I'll show you in just a minute. Let's go the other way. And this is... It's just contacting right there. But the cylinder's just at its... just bottomed out. And uh, the holes almost line up, just a little bit further, and they line up. So I, I wasn't even expecting it to go this far, so I'm pretty happy. So thank you, Driftwood and Sagebrush. Um, I don't know your name, but you know who you are. Thank you for making that recommendation to me to get them a little more inboard. Now, this is the weld I'm worried that is going to break on me. And if it does, because I didn't bevel it, and I meant to bevel it, and I mocked it up, and I got it in place, and I started welding it. I was like halfway done welding. I was like, I didn't bevel it. I wanted to bevel this edge right here and get a nice deep penetration, but I didn't. But it's all welded around the bottom, um, all the way around, and all across the top here with multiple passes. So um, it might hold. It might break on me. If it breaks on me, I will cut all this off and bevel it and put it on right again. So, and you can see that doesn't hit there. There's a little bit of a gap there. There's a gap there, and that's clear there. So you can see the cylinders all the way in here, and that's almost lined up with the furthest hole right there. Okay, so let's go the other way. That's the center hole. That's, uh, you know, where the blade's perpendicular to the tractor's path. And there it's all the way over. And so that's pretty good. So the goal was to be able to flip this around 180 degrees. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, just for reference, you know, I can't spin it around this way without that hitting up inside there. And then this obviously would hit this. I thought about just cutting this off because I thought, well, I'll never use this again. But just in case my cylinder fails and I want to go back to the pin system, I want to keep this intact. So. what it does here so that's about straight so four inches that way it's clear there we're gonna swing the other way it's clear there uh, that does hit right there so what I should be doing is flipping this to the outside when I turn it over that's easy to do There we go. Now when I flip it that way, there's plenty of room there. I measured the distance from here to here and there to there to make sure that my hoses were going to be long enough. But I think what's going to happen when I drop this down on the ground, that distance from there to here is going to get longer. Let's find out. Okay. So this distance from here to here is actually going to be closer. You know, that's 33 inches or so. This distance is going to be a little further just because the, the valves are, I mean, the hookups over here. So this is 34 
and a half. So a 36 inch hose should do right there for, for this height anyway. And then the long side is going to be 45. Okay. Now let's drop this down and see what it's like on the ground. Okay, also, I'm going to extend this to where the blade's tipped back like this to push this further out. That'll push that a little bit further out as well. Let's do that. Okay, now, that one's 42, so a 48 inch will work for this one. But for this one, you know, that's 54. So I'll need a 5 foot hose for that, a 60 incher. Okay guys, Napa was going to charge me $100 to make a 60 inch hose, to make a 5 foot half inch hose, um, and that was without fitting, so this was at Big R for $18. So a half inch, 60 inch, uh, this is going to work. And I bought this little male male, or female female connector that's half inch pipe that um, if I do need to put one of the shorter pieces that I have on one of these, um, that I can lengthen it. Okay, that'll give me some extension if I need it. That little piece right there, that was four bucks. So instead of buying a bunch of hose ends, um, Tractor Supply was actually out of all their hose ends like this, and even these elbows, so was Big R. Um, I thought I'd just go ahead and take these off and reuse these. Okay, we're gonna try these pliers out on these hose ends just to see if this is a tool we can carry in the tractor. Um, Cause this is infinitely adjustable and this is the Icon brand. Um, from Harbor Freight. This just came out recently, so um, at my Harbor Freight, they didn't even have it on the shelf yet, but they did have it in the back. So they hadn't even um, made a place on the shelves for it yet. But basically, it's like the Nipex or Nipex brand, whatever, uh, of adjustable um, pliers that uh, those, the Nipex is about $70. These were $39. These were $40, basically. Um, the teeth here are a little bit smaller, which may give it a better range of adjustability than the Nipex, but um, whether or not that makes it less robust, I don't know. Um, there is a lot of width there, as you can see. Um, but uh, let's try them out here. It does have a bunch of numbers in here from 50 millimeters up to 12 millimeters. So you should be able to slide it up and down uh, with it open and that should about get you where you want. So this might be a great thing to carry in the tractor because it's kind of one thing fits all. Um, so let's try it out here. Okay, so I've never even used these before, so let's see. I'm going to push the button and open these up real wide, and then we'll close them down on here to try to get it about on that size right there. Okay. Okay. Well, I know I put these together with really big wrenches. I wasn't expecting it to come loose that easily. And I guess what's cool about this is it has a memory, right? It holds your um, position so that it doesn't, if you're working on several of the same bolt or you're going back to the same nut, it keeps the same size. Cool. Well, it looks good from here. So 160 inch, 148 inch hose and um, half inch ISO connectors. Okay, so it's working pretty good uh, in the barn. So um, I'm not exactly sure what to do with this. Um, I thought about drilling a little hole right here to drop this in, but it'll fall through. So I probably just have to weld a little washer on here um, so it doesn't fall through all the way. Um, but hanging down in front there, it's gonna be in the way. Hanging down back there, it can get broken off. Um, so I'll have to figure out something. Okay, put some little Lynch pins in and 
I don't know. I was going to drill a hole there and then weld the washer on, and that's just too much drama right now. Um, that'll hold it in place and keep it from falling down and getting in the way. If I lose it, I guess I'll have to make another one. Oh, well. I realized when I was looking at it from the cab there that I want to put a line here so that I know when it's lined up um, when I'm looking at the back so I know it's perfectly straight. <laughs> and maybe that's overkill, but um, that'll just give me an idea of an easy reference point. Just have a line drawn from here to here so that when it, I'm tipping it back, I know when it's basically midline again. Especially if there's a lot of um, unevenness on the blade, like snow's piled up or dirt's piled up against it or whatever, or snow's trapped against it. All right, there's my reference line. I just kind of ground a little line there with a cutoff wheel. Ran the black Sharpie down it. Maybe I'll put some paint in it later because that's not going to stay. And um, I don't know. Maybe I should put angles on it. But uh, maybe that's silver kill. Because <clears throat> it doesn't really matter what angle I have. Maybe if I'm trying to do something consistently. Anyway, we'll start with this.
Well, yep, it worked well. It didn't crack that I can see anywhere. This wasn't a lot of stress, okay? I was dragging it through dirt, kind of like I am kind of the snow. Um, I did get it pretty deep a couple times where it stopped the tractor. And uh, when I was backing up, had the blade facing backwards, I was backing up and I'd hit something, a big stump or dirt way deep in the dirt and it would stop. So it didn't break it. That wasn't really a side shearing force. Like if I caught something on the edges, which I'm not gonna really try to do that on purpose, but if I do do that, then I'll know if that's gonna break or not. And I think that's gonna be the weakest part right there. And I might guess at it, I don't know. But um, the hydraulics worked well, it did tilt. I didn't really need to tilt it um, with this job today, but it was kind of fun just moving it back and forth just for fun, uh, just cause it's cool. Uh, but really for pushing bushes out of lay, like these things, you know, these are five, six feet tall. They got a pretty good root system. I'd much rather use the box blade or even this grader scraper right here. It's the 72 inch, so it's pretty heavy. But what these, the advantage these have over this is this is so light. When you drop the three point down, these, this can just kind of float over the bushes sometimes. Instead of cutting, it'll sometimes just float up over the top and then you gotta pull forward and back up and try to catch it again. Those things are so heavy, you just drop them on the ground and start backing up and they'll cut down any bushes. And they also kind of keep them contained too. If you can keep the bush in between here, that back edge is in a cutting edge, but it'll still cut bushes out really, really well. So this is probably my favorite tool for that. Um, but this box blade over here, this Mahindra box blade, this is their heavy duty version for the Cat 1. It does have a cutting blade on the back edge. So I can actually use this as a bulldozer. So this works really well for pushing a lot of dirt backwards. But if I'm just cutting bushes, that grader scraper seems to be the best thing. You know, this did the job. It's uh, it's light. It doesn't weigh much, but then again, sometimes it'll just start floating over the bushes that it's pushing um, once they're broken loose, which is a little bit, you know, slows me down a little bit, but not a ton. Uh, otherwise, I'm pretty happy.